everyone, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here today with another dyeing experiment for you, where I'm going to be dyeing three whole unwound 50 gram balls of palette to be used in a shawl design that will be released sometime in early 2013, my own design. And I've started with eight cups of water, because the, the other part of the experiment is I'm going to start by entering the balls of yarn so that only half of them are submerged in the dye bath. And then I'm later going to add more water um, to increase the level of dye so that way more of the area is access, has access to the dye. So not only are we going to be getting kettle dye because the yarn is dry to start, it's in a ball so there will be some variation of color, but these 50 gram balls uh, are more open than the cakes that I've been using in my other dyeing experiments. So we'll see what we get. Um, but that's why it's an experiment. So to this eight cups of water, I'm going to start by adding just a half a cup of vinegar. Now, I may decide to add more later depending on how high I get the water level. I already have the pot on to heat because, you know, it's going to take a while um, to warm up and I'm not going to add and yarn until it's at a simmer. So I'm going to add six drops of blue. And this is just McCormick's uh, sorted food coloring. And then I'm going to add some McCormick's black. Two, three, five, six. Six drops of that. Um, you know, the black, as I've said before, is composed of multiple colors, so this will help um, us see splitting in multiple colors. But the other thing that's going to help with splitting in multiple colors is I'm using a Wilton's Paste Food Coloring that's purple. And purple also has a tendency to split. Now, I have no idea how much of the paste dye you need for saturated colors, so I'm just sticking a fork in have a fairly good coating on there and then I'm going to stir it into the dye bath. Which, since it looks pretty dark, I would say that I've got a fair amount of color in there. You know, when the disadvantage to mixing colors in a black pot is that it becomes very difficult to see what your colors are. So one technique that I like to do to see what my color looks like is just take a piece of paper towel and dip it in. And just from that dip, and I'm not sure if you can see on camera, oh yeah you can, but you can see how the color is just separated from being wicked up on the uh, on the paper towel from like the deep purple and then up to a blue. So we know that already that we're going to have some very interesting color separation and amazing fun time and that I added enough purple dye for the purple hues to uh, show through. The dye bath has reached a boil and so it's hot and I have reduced the heat so it'll stay the simmer but we don't want to actually cook the yarn. And now I'm going to add my three balls of yarn. So you'll notice that these are already like a green color so I am over dyeing the yarn and whoops alright already my plan there we go I have to add it that way my plan to add them in sideways was nearly foiled but I know that they're not going to be identical um, in shape or color uh, but you know they should come out looking pretty cool and they will have similar colors in them so we'll see what happens uh, after a bit. I may decide to lay them in completely to submerge them. They, they will all fit along the bottom and add additional water if necessary. So now I'm going to put the cover on and leave this for I think 10 minutes and then I will be back. So it's been 10 minutes and let's see how things are going. Now I'm not sure I guess you can see a bit on camera that we have some really cute wicking 
like a pinkish color up on the side. Um, but in general, these are pretty much collapsing. And a lot of color actually is already in the balls of yarn. So I am, in fact, going to let them submerge completely. Um, I'm not sure how much dye, you know, is left to even be absorbed. But, you know, the only way to find out is by trying. And seeing if there is any other color to, to move on in. But, if not, this is a pretty cool kind of colorway anyway. I like the separation. And we also don't know yet what's happening on in the interior of the, the balls. I am going to add... A little more water just because I want these to be completely submerged. There we go. Oh, fun. Fun, fun, fun. Alright, and I'm leaving the heat on low because you know it doesn't need to be that hot for the dye to absorb to the wool. And I'm gonna recover and we'll be back in a bit. So the second 10 minutes has elapsed, and there has not been completely significant uh, additional coloration, but there has been some spreading of the more pink color. It's a little hard to pick up on the screen. And there's still a fair amount of color left in the dye bath. But what I'm going to do at this point is turn off the heat entirely and allow this to just sit in the dye bath for, you know, a while. Um, at which point I will take these, take the balls out, let them cool, and wash them off, and then let them dry a bit before I wind them onto the Nitty Naughty. These balls of yarn have been dying for a couple days since they've been washed, and as you can see that from looking at this one side, it looks like that there is still a fair amount of the original green color. But if you flip them over, you can see that there's a lot of like a pinky purple and some of this navy deep purple color. A little less on this one, but this one had less of the green on that side than these. They kind of, these balls are so flat that the colors kind of rotated a bit as I was letting them dry. So I'm now going to wind them into skeins on my Nitty Naughty and we'll get a sense of how much color coverage there is how deep these dark colors penetrated into the balls of yarn. And we will also be able to see how similar each of the skeins look. I'm part way through winding this first ball into a skein on my Nitty Naughty and I just wanted to show you what the interior of it was looking like. There's still a lot of coloration on the one side and some of the original green on the other. Another thing I'm not sure you can see, but there's so many variations to even the pale green. I think it's because there's some subtle blue or maybe there was some green um, in the skein. I mean, it's hard with the light to see on the ball, but you can kind of see all the subtle variation that still exists even as we go from the brighter to the more lighter section of this ball. So the first ball has been wound up into a skein, and the purple and bright colors go through a fairly decent part of it. Um, I wish that the colors showed up better on the camera, but this is very pretty, and I can't wait to see what the others look like. So here we have our three skeins. As you can see, we go from a deeper purple on each of them to going back towards the lighter green. But the lighter color is pretty mottled. There's flecks of blue and pink that go all the way down on all three. The third one seems to have a little more color towards the beginning. Um, but And if I was going to knit them all up separately, then I would be able to do a more accurate comparison. But I would say that they're pretty even. Um, the way that I plan on knitting it up is, you know, the project is not going to be designed to have stripes, 
but I'm going to alternate skeins so that way I can get an overall gradient going through the project rather than seeing a similar gradient going on three times. So that way if one of the sections is in fact longer, it won't really make much of a difference. Here are our complete dried skeins of Knit Picks palette. Um, the initial color was sagebrush that we dyed by leaving them half submerged and then totally submerged in a dye pot. Now I have a little bit of the original color and it may look like there's big sections of green left but it's a little hard to show on camera but there is a lot of modeling. Oh this section shows it well. There's a lot of modeling in the color and everything is um, a bit darker or different than what there was originally. But by leaving the balls of yarn half submerged, we were able to preserve some of the original color. Because in all of my previous cake dyeing uh, sessions, I never actually was able to preserve any pure white. For the first time in one of these videos, I'm happy to share with you a final knit project created out of an asymmetrically dyed ball of yarn. You can see the way that the colors gradiate down, becoming darker from lighter. And this shawl was knit with two of the balls of yarn alternating on every right side row, just swapping um, which strand I was knit with. So that way, rather than having a striped pattern, the darkest color pooled at the end. And then when I was about to run out of yarn, I went to the inside of another ball of yarn and brought it in here so that way you know the gradient would be uniform. So this is the Denise shawl um, and the pattern for this shawl will be available um, through Ravelry for purchase sometime in the spring of 2013. So thanks again for watching this tutorial. I am Rebecca from Chemnet.